So today we are going to write our first code in Vidlog, okay? So our hello world code in Vidlog, but of course we cannot do hello world in Vidlog because this is a hardware description language. So what we are going to do is we are going to describe uh, a very simple digital circuit which is an AND gate. So AND gate, uh, as you know, it's a basic building block in digital circuits. Here I have a two input AND gate. So I have two inputs and one output. And as you know, the output becomes high only when all the inputs are high. Otherwise, the output will remain low. Okay. So this is what we are going to describe. Now, where are you going to write your with log code? So in the previous uh, video, I have mentioned with log is a textual representation of your hardware. So you can use any text editor to write your with log. So again, if I compare with C code. Uh, you know C as a programming language that is also a textual representation. You can use any text editor. Which compiler you are going to use or which linker you will be using later. It has nothing to do with where you are actually writing the code. Same way here also uh, which simulation tool you will use, which synthesized tool you will use. It has nothing to do with where you are actually writing your Vidlog. So today I'll be using a, a simple text editor, my favorite Notepad++. You can use whatever is your favorite text editor, Notepad, Notepad++ or Sublime or VA editor, whatever you like. But definitely don't use Microsoft Word, uh, which is not a text editor. Okay. So Notepad++, I can easily choose my language so that he will highlight the keywords. So as usual, you will see why I am saying Vidlog is inspired by uh, C programming language. So first thing, like in our C, you can write comments in your Vidlog code also. Okay, So the comments, it will be ignored by your simulation tools and the uh, synthesis tools. So I am writing my comment, uh, my first Vidlog code. Same as C, you can have uh, single line comments or multi line comments. Okay, So this is a multi-line comment. Both are supported. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, second part. No matter which hardware you are going to describe, every hardware in Vidlog is called a module. Okay, module. So, module is a keyword in Vidlog. Again, like other programming languages, there are specific words in Vidlog also which has predefined meaning. We call them keywords and we learn the keywords as we go along. So module is a keyword. So module is just representing a piece of hardware. And this piece of hardware, it can be as simple as a single gate or a single transistor or as complicated as a full processor. They are all modules uh, from Vidlog point of view. Again, if I compare with, uh, in these initial lectures, I will be comparing with your software implementation because you are more familiar with that. So many a time uh, people compare this term module with the concept of classes when you write object oriented program, right? So similar way, this uh, is a way of hierarchically designing your hardware. So that is also motivated from uh, software development. Instead of writing a very big complicated hardware, what we do is we'll go for this divide and conquer approach. We will build small, small hardware pieces. We call them small hardware modules. Then we will combine them to build the complete complicated hardware. Okay? So we'll be using this hierarchical design. And this is also called a, a bottom to up design approach. We will start with simple modules, then combine those modules to make a complicated one. So after module, you should give some name to the hardware that you are going to describe. Now names, you know, in programming languages, we call them identifiers, right? So the variable, any name, we call them identifiers. And what can be an identifier? The rules are exactly same as C language. You can have alphanumerics, capital A to Z, small a to Z, numbers 1 to 0, and underscore. Okay, Only these many are allowed as identifiers, names. And you cannot start with a number. Same rule as C. You can start with an underscore. Again, uh, like C, we don't encourage starting with an underscore. So let me call this 
uh, my and gate. Now, of course, you cannot use keywords as identifiers, as names. Okay. So, again, Notepad++, plus plus, he will highlight the keyword. So, I can see like this is not a keyword. Fine. Now, after that, okay, we need to put an opening and closing braces and finally a semicolon. That's the first line. Now, let me write one more keyword, which is end module. Okay, so module and end module. So this is similar to our opening and closing braces in C. So your piece of hardware is starting here and your piece of hardware description, it is ending here. And you need to write the description in between these two. Remember there is no semicolon after end module, but here there is a semicolon. So this, this step, let's call it as a module declaration. We basically declare the name of the module. The next step is called port declaration, port declaration. So you will have to basically describe what are the inputs and what are the outputs and what are the input outputs. That is a special case, we will see it later. Basically what are the inputs and what are the outputs coming to and from your hardware. So if I look at my AND gate, I have two inputs going in and one output coming out. Okay. Now traditionally when you uh, draw digital circuit, we draw the inputs always on the left and outputs on the right. That is the usual conversion we follow so that you don't have to put special add or anything. So I have two inputs and one output that I need to describe. So I am going to describe the inputs and outputs. So next keyword input that is a keyword followed by identify the name of the input. Okay, so let's follow the same names that we use here. So first input, let me call it in1 and next input, let's call it in2. Now, different people, they have different coding style. Uh, one of the recommended coding style is when you're declaring input and output, you declare only one input and one output per line. Okay, so later you will see uh, why it is beneficial to you and uh, this is perfectly fine to declare two input you write input once and write in one into same way you declare two integers in C int a b right or you can also declare int a int b same way here you can write input in one then input in two okay again this is the recommended style so let me follow the recommended style. So, and also put some indentation so that we can easily understand and let's send this guy here. So, in one, in two. These are the two inputs. We need comma after each port. Now, we have one output. Okay. So, that we will write as output. Again, a keyword out. That's it. We have a single output. Now, with the last port, these are the ports, okay, pins. So, in one, in two, out, there are three ports. With the last port, we will not put the comma. With all other port declaration, we need to put a comma after each input or output declaration. So, this part we call as the port declaration. Okay, done. So basically we declare the name of the module, we declare the ports of the module. Now we will write the actual description of our hardware. So what we need is an AND gate and in Vidlook there is a built-in keyword called AND. So if you want to build an AND gate, you can just write AND, opening and closing braces, semicolon and within this uh, bracket what you need to do is, okay, this is a uh, predefined order. This is actually describing an AND gate, okay? modeling an AND gate. So, whatever you write first here will represent the output of this AND gate. Whatever you write uh, subsequently, they all represent inputs. Okay? So, I need an AND gate and the output of this AND gate should be connected to this output. That is my idea. So you can think this something like that. This AND is a is a pre-built thing. This is already sitting here. And 
think it as a black box. Okay. So this AND gate is sitting inside that and you have two wires going in and one wire coming out. Okay. So the output from this AND gate you want to connect to this wire and the inputs to the AND gate you want to connect to these two wires. Okay. So think it like that. So this AND gate is this guy and whatever I write as the first parameter here will represent the output coming from this AND gate. Okay. So where should the output from this AND gate go? Here. right? So I write out there. Then I have two inputs. Order matters? No. In AND gate you can either write IN1, IN2 or IN2, IN1 because both are representing two inputs to the AND gate. Okay, so that's it. You have done with the description. Uh, you save it wherever you want. Okay, so let me put some folder and let me just call it and gate dot v. But traditionally, this is not a strict rule like Java. Uh, your module name and the file name they can be different, but traditionally, good coding practice, we keep the same name for the file as well as the module. And when you are saving, we use the extension dot v to indicate this is a vlog file. Another good coding practice is it is possible to write multiple modules inside the same file. There is no issue. You can have an AND gate here. Then same thing you can copy paste and change the AND to OR and you can have an OR gate. Both are sitting in the same file. But that is also not a recommended design practice. The recommended style is in one file you write only one module description. That is the good practice. Okay, so we are done with the AND gate design. Now following same thing you can build OR gate also instead of AND if you make OR this became an OR gate. Okay, The module name does not matter even if you write AND here effectively now it is an OR gate, ON OR gate, XOR gate. So all these are keywords. All these gates are keywords. Okay? So we have AND, OR, XOR, XNOR, NOT. Okay? These are all different kind of keywords. Now same thing I have put it in slide also. You can have a look. Now these are the supported basic gates. As I mentioned, so we have NOT, AND, OR, XOR, NAND, NOR, XNOR. In addition to that, we have something called these buffers. Again, practically, we will be hardly using them in coding. So buffer, it does nothing. Okay, You can see this is like a NOT gate. This has a single output. See, this has a single input. Whatever is coming in the input will go to the output. That's what buffer does. Then why do we really need buffer? It's a uh, different question. I will explain to you uh, that later. Why we use buffers and where we actually use buffer. Another interesting thing when we use these uh, gates is expandable uh, primitive. So the AND gate, okay, that I wrote here, is a model for AND inside Whitlock. Now this is representing a two input one output AND gate. Now you can easily model a three input one output AND gate. You just have to write IN3 here and you write IN3 here. Okay. So now it became three input one output. Okay. Same way you can have any number of input to your AND gate. That will model uh, an AND gate with those many input. Whether practically, physically, whether that is a possible, it's a different question. You can definitely model it. You can definitely describe such a hardware. So uh, this is the example. So this is what we saw: two input. This is three input. This is four input. So this expandable primitive style is supported for most of the gates. You can see not and or x or nan no x no. They all. Uh, support this expandability. Now here you will see AND OR XOR NAND NO XNO. It is written expandable input. Okay? So that means 
when you when you write the gate here whatever parameter you write as uh, the first one it will be treated as an output from that gate every subsequent parameters okay every subsequent uh, ports that you write here they will be treated as input that's what we call as expandable input now there are gates which are expandable output also for example node gate okay a node gate cannot have multiple input a node gate can have a single input okay because what node gate does is it just uh, inverts the input so if you have many inputs coming which input we will invert uh, there, is, there is no clarity right so a node gate it will have only one input but it can have many output okay so a node gate we can draw it as a triangle so a node gate it can have only one input coming like this but it can have many outputs going and all of them will have the inverted value of this input okay so this is like multi output node gate but you cannot have multi output and gate you can have same uh, wire repeatedly taken from here okay that's fine but usually and gates we'll say the inputs are expandable but a single output but for node gate a single input but multiple output so if i write a node gate here if i say like not out in one this out is the output from node in is the input to the node now if i write out in one in two okay it doesn't represent a single output and two input how he will treat it he will treat all the parameters here as output except the last one so even if you write out in one in two both of these are representing output and this is representing input that is the case for not okay special case all other gates the first one will represent output everything else will represent input that is in the case of expandable gates now let's go to a slightly more complicated circuit okay so here you can see i have one and gate and one or gate okay so and gate is taking two inputs and the output from this and gate is going to this or gate and that or gate is again getting another input and the final output is coming from this or gate this is an or gate okay now how to model this one how to describe this one now from the external world this is what you should look we are treating this entire circuit as a single module now as far as this single module is concerned which are the inputs we have three inputs in one in two in three and one output out okay so that's what i am saying so let me take a, a new file and start writing it so module let me call it and or uh, circuit i have three inputs in one and two in three okay in one input in two input in three and one output out right or circuit output out okay now let's uh, model the gates so i have an and gate okay so i can write and okay so let's keep it here so i have an and gate here and as you know whatever you write first here will represent the output of this and gate now what i will write here can i write this out here no if i write this out here that is representing the output of this and gate is going here that is not the case what i need is i need to connect the output of this and gate to the input of this or gate so physically how do we do it okay if you are physically doing it you will take a piece of wire and just connect them together so same way we will have to model our hardware here we have to describe our hardware in the same way so i need a wire which can be used for taking this output so we write wire so you can see that is again a keyword in verilog 
and wire is a basic data type also in Wayload from a, a, a programming language perspective. Okay. Uh, although I write wire there, uh, and finally when you really make a chip, there are, may not be a wire like that. Okay. Again, remember we are just describing our hardware at this point of time. So in my description, I can use a data type called wire wherever I need a physical wire. So I will write wire, same syntax as C. Uh, that's why I said this is a data type followed by you need to give some name to your wire and identify. So same rules, I'm going to call it and out. That is the name of my wire. So this wire I will write first because that is coming out of the AND gate. Then two inputs in one, in two, right? These two are directly going here. Now let me put the OR gate, OR. What is the output from the OR gate? It's directly going out, so I can write O out. And what are the inputs? One input is this one in three. The other input is this wire. So we will write and out. That's it. So this is describing this circuit. So remember what I said in the previous video. We have to design the circuit first. Then you use Verilog to describe it in textual format. So this is the text representation, a HDL representation of this circuit. Okay, so for the time being, this is enough. In the next video, we will actually do simulation and see whether it is really working. Okay, uh, and we will check all the syntax errors also. So uh, remember, like C, after every line, in most cases, you have to put a semicolon except in few cases like in the end point. Okay, so see you in the next video.